tribal decks in EDH are a really fun strategy to build, and there's a group of cards that can form a great foundation and go into almost any EDH deck. Let's look at the top EDH cards for tribal strategies in Commander, and the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We're going to talk about Tribal in EDH and some really good cards for that strategy. But first, if you wouldn't mind, go down there, hit like, hit subscribe if you like the video by the end of it and you want to see more like this. Let's jump into these cards. If you've ever seen our three ways to build series, very often one of the three ways I'll build is a Tribal build be it elves, goblins, wizards, whatever. And I'll always reference a group of cards that I don't mention in those specific videos because I want to keep the cards that I mention in those builds specific to the commander and not generalized. In this video, we are going to go over those generalized cards that I think would make a great foundation for any tribal strategy in Commander. Now granted, these don't have to all go in every deck, that's not what I'm saying. This is a good starting place, you could start with this whole list and then chop cards off of it as you find more in tune or more synergistic cards to go with your specific Commander, but this is a great starting place. We're going to go over the colorless options and then some cards that are specific to certain colors that I also think can be good in pretty much any tribal deck that plays those colors. Let's start with Vanquisher's Banner. It represents a lot. For five mana, you get an artifact. You choose a creature type as it comes into the battlefield. You get an Anthem with its first ability. So creatures of the chosen type are all going to get plus one, plus one. And then that second ability, whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, you get to draw a card. So we get card advantage on the cast. It can get countered. It can get killed as soon as it comes into play. doesn't matter. You're still going to get to draw a card and keep your hand full. You'll notice a lot of times with tribal decks, they're creature heavy, so you want to use as many outlets of card advantage as you possibly can so that you can keep pumping creatures onto the battlefield through removal and through board wipes. Coat of Arms is up next, and I picked the White Border 7th Edition art because this is my favorite art for Coat of Arms, and I'm a big fan. Five mana for an artifact. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature in play that shares a type with it. So for example, if there are three goblins in play, each gets plus two, plus two, because there are two other Others other than the main goblin for which it's checking. This is a way for your entire line of creatures to get out of hand real fast. If you've got a bunch of elves, if you've got a bunch of goblins on the battlefield, they're all giving each other plus one, plus one, and the whole line is growing as a result. Obelisk of Erd, this is one that can convoke in. It's a six cost artifact. Tapping creatures of the chosen type or tapping any creature will give it minus one on its mana cost. And as it enters the battlefield, choose a type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus two, plus two. So it's just an anthem for your chosen creature type. Door of Destinies. As it comes into play, choose a creature type. Whenever you play a spell, put a charge counter on Door of Destinies. It's an anthem. Creatures you control of that type get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Door of Destinies. So this is another way to make very small tokens. But if it's plants, if it's sapper, Links, you can make those plant tokens, those sapling tokens, huge with a lot of casts so that you can get counters on Door of Destinies. Also interesting to note that Proliferate works really well with Door of Destinies because you're going to be able to add to the counters, the charge counters on Door of Destinies. Birthing Bows is one that I really like. It's a three mana for artifact for a ta four cost tap ability that says create a two two colorless shapeshifter creature token. So this creature token will be your creature type of your tribal theme in your deck because it's every creature type of every tribal theme in every deck. This is one that I would say, you know, is a good starting place, but this is one of the first ones that I could cut as I'm building my lineup with better synergistic cards, more specific to my individual tribe. Icon of Ancestry is up next. At the three cost artifact, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one, so we get the lowest anthem that we can. However, pay three, tap it, look at the top three of your library, you can reveal a creature card of the chosen type, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom. So this is another way to get card advantage advantage with a tribal strategy. I like Icon of Ancestry because it's cheap to cast. It's only three. Here's another one that's only three. Herald's Horn. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creature spells of the, cho of the 
chosen type costs one less to cast. So we're going to make all of our creatures cheaper. And at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card of the chosen type, you can reveal it and put it into your hand. That's at the beginning of your upkeep and it automatically triggers for free. So you're going to be able to filter those cards into your hand and maybe be drawing extra cards just off the residual value of having Herald's Horn on the battlefield. Adaptive Automaton. This one's kind of a classic. Pay three for an artifact creature as it enters the battlefield choose a creature type it is that chosen type and other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one so we've got an anthem built into adaptive automaton as well creatures that can be any chosen type as they enter the battlefield are very good like metallic mimic pay two for an artifact creature as it enters the battlefield choose a creature type it is the chosen type in addition to its other types and each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it it says additional in case the card already triggers a plus one plus one counter coming onto it basically it means they all enter with a plus one plus one counter at least per metallic mimics text versus incubator here's an older card three cost artifact choose a creature type as it enters the battlefield creature spells of the chosen type cost two less to cast okay this one in and of itself does not provide the card advantage that we want we'll have to look to other cards for that but having the cost of a spell reduced by two that can be pretty big especially additive over time i've got one other kind of older card that i want to show you and that's riptide replicator this one's kind of tough to pull off but i think in the right deck it could really help you out four x for an artifact as it enters the battlefield choose a color and a creature type comes into play with x charge counters on it so you can proliferate this good to note pay four tap it put an xx creature token of the chosen color and type into play where x is a number of charge counters so this is just a way to get more out you can see in the art there that they are creating slivers so this is a good one for slivers because slivers give all of the abilities to all of the other slivers and so just creating some vanilla slivers can be very good for your strategy those are a bunch of artifacts that can go into almost any tribal build we've also got two lands that are very important to note cavern of souls which is enters the battlefield choose a creature type tap it to add a colorless or tap it to add one of any color you can only spend it to cast a creature spell of the chosen type and that spell can't be countered. So we get a nice little residual value from that spell being uncounterable and also unclaimed territory. It's like Cavern of Souls with one less ability. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool, spend the mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So those are two lands that you probably want to look into if you're going to be building a tribal strategy as well. Two lands and some colorless cards. Those can go into almost any EDH deck. I'm not saying they all have to go into every EDH EDH deck, but it's a good starting place and you can cut from there. Let's talk about some cards that are specific to colors and we're going to start with Radiant Destiny. One white, two other for an enchantment that has Ascend, which is giving you the city's blessing if you have ten or more permanents. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one off the rip and then once we have the city's blessing, which shouldn't be super difficult in a tribal creature based EDH deck, they also have Vigilance. So added value from Radiant Destiny seeing that you have 10 permanents on the battlefield. Now, Cathar's Crusade, this one's not specific to any individual creature type. I just think that this is a fantastic, almost auto-include for me in go-wide creature decks. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. It's not checking for creature types. However, just for creature-based decks, this card is so bomb. For five mana, a nice sticky enchantment that's going to be fairly hard to remove. Kindred Boon is another enchantment that's fairly hard to remove remove two white two other as it enters the battlefield choose a creature type you can pay two and that's a colon that's not a tap that's not a once per turn or anything put a divinity counter on target creature you control of the chosen type each creature you control with a divinity counter on it has indestructible just has it you don't have to reactivate this it's two mana drop the counter on there suddenly your commander is indestructible and we'll go from there knock out your lieutenants make them all indestructible as well these kindred cards are part of a cycle and we're going to hit each one of the cycle in this video by the end of it so stick around to see the rest of the kindred cards for the other colors those were some white cards. Let's jump over to green cards, and we're going to start with Steely Resolve. One green, one other. As it comes into play, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type can't be the targets of spell or abilities, period. That's it. Now, this does mean that you can't target them either. However, it's going to get targeted removal off the board, and we're going to be fine. You may not want to play this in some kind of Voltron strategy or an equipment-based deck, things like that, but Steely Resolve in the right deck can be really, really powerful. It's like a really cheap asceticism. 
Kindred Summons. Here's the green Kindred card. Two green, five other for an instant. Choose a creature type. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards of the chosen type. So, so far it is checking until we absolutely hit creatures, which is nice. It's not just the top X of the cards, period, of your deck, period. It's going to absolutely find something every single time you cast it. Reveal X cards until you reveal X creature cards of the chosen type, where X is the number of creatures you control of that type. Put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest of the reveal cards into your library. This is insane. Just immediately double your entire ranks. Have Cathar's Crusade out or something like that. Have some kind of coat of arms strategy that's just going to build on top of each other as your entire line doubles. And in green, no doubt, so it's pretty easy to get six mana. Plus, we can do this at instant speed. We can do this in combat. We can do this at the end of our opponent's turn, right before it's our turn to attack again. This card is so boss. I would put it in any tribal strategy that's got green and is able to ramp up to seven mana pretty quickly. We've got one more green card and that's Guardian Project. One green, three other for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name, obviously it's EDH, so we're only playing one of's, as another car, uh, creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. This is another one. It doesn't necessarily have to be in any singular tribe or really benefit it being part of a tribal build. This is just really good for a creature based deck. You need card advantages in these tribal decks because more often than not tribal decks are a little more casual than the competitive decks. And so you want to be able to keep your hand full through board wipes as you're playing these creatures onto the battlefield. You want to deploy your assets. You just always want to keep a reserve so that you can keep playing more assets. Assets. Let's move to blue. We've got Call to the Kindred. This is not part of the Kindred cycle, but it does have that word in it. One blue, three other for an enchantment aura that enchants a creature. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may look at the top five cards of your library. If you do, you may cast a creature. You may put, sorry, a creature card that shares a creature type with the enchanted creature from among them straight onto the battlefield. Then you put the rest of those cards on the bottom of your library in any order. In some kind of Eldrazi deck, this would be nuts. In pretty much any deck, this would be really, really strong as far as a tribal strategy goes. But think about the bigger, the better. If this is in some kind of, I don't know what kind of dinosaur deck is running blue, but some kind of big, stompy creature tribal-based deck just getting free ones onto the battlefield. And really, free spells at any time is going to be great value, the ultimate value, and definitely something that you want to include. Call to the Kindred, excellent blue tribal spell. Kindred Discovery, this is the blue part of that cycle. Two blue, three other, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. This is just a ridiculous card. This has to go in your blue tribal deck, okay? I need you to include this. I implore you to include this. As they enter the battlefield, you're drawing a card. When they're attacking, you're drawing a card. This is doing exactly what I think is one of the weaknesses of a tribal strategy and keeping you from burning out, keeping your hand full. Let's look at cards in the color black. One black, one other for an enchantment. Cover of Darkness enters the battlefield. Choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type have fear. This can be really good in a black-based tribal deck because they're not going to be able to be blocked except by artifact creatures and are black creatures. So this is for very cheap, for two mana, is going to give us really good evasion for our attacking creatures. Kindred Dominance is the black card in the Kindred cycle. Want two black, five other for a sorcery. Choose a creature type the creature type we're playing, destroy all creatures that aren't of the chosen type. This card is insane, and the artwork is insane. I love this one, I love the Kindred Cycle, I really think it's excellent, and they are fantastic in your tribal strategies. And I'll tell you, the demons in that art, they're freaking me out. We're moving on. Species Specialist. Two black, two other for a human warrior. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature of the chosen type dies, you may draw a card. Hello. We're playing against a goblin deck that keeps sacrificing them? Let's use it that way. We're playing a humans or a warrior's deck or whatever tribal deck that we're running that has black in the colors. Let's run this and whenever our stuff dies, we get to draw a card. And there's no life loss. There's nothing else tied to this. It's just when a creature of the chosen type dies, you can draw a card. You get to replace it. Keeps your hand full, keeps your velocity and momentum moving so that we can stay in the fight through a board wipe. Moving to red, we've got Molten Echoes and it's, it's an enchantment for two red, two other. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. I feel like I've said that so much during this video. <laughs> Whenever a non-token creature of the chosen type enters a battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. It gains haste and you can exile at the beginning of the next end step. This one works really well if you've got a big splashy tribe that's stomping around, big powers and toughnesses or ETBs or attack triggers, you know, things like Inferno Titan, if this 
card is on the battlefield when you play a titan like that it's dealing damage when it comes in the battlefield the token is also dealing the damage it's swinging it's dealing damage this is a great card if you've got a big stompy tribe that you want to get some extra value out of red can be a tough color to get a lot of continuing value out of so you want to do what you can roar of the crowd i really like this one one red three other choose a creature type roar of the crowd deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of permanents you control of the chosen type this is so good i've seen so many tribal goblin decks that are able to have 50 or more goblin tokens on the battlefield at once this is a one shot for four mana just end the game booyah you're dead i have a hundred goblins you take a hundred any response <laughs> Roar the crowd can just finish the game for you. And here's the red card that is in the Kindred Cycle. Two red, four other. Choose a creature type for each creature you control of the chosen type. Create a token that's a copy of that creature. It gains haste and exile them at the beginning of the next end step. This, this is another line doubler in this Kindred Cycle. Now granted, this is a sorcery. It's only going to happen the one time and it is one big attack but for a go wide strategy if you're just trying to go wide with a bunch of one one tokens kindred charge is the kind of card that can get the victory for you it can get you there we got one card that i think is good to note it is two colors etchings of the chosen one black one white one other as enters the battlefield choose a creature type you've got a mini anthem creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one and you can pay one sack a creature of the chosen type to give target creature you control indestructible until end of turn so if you're creating a lot of soldier tokens and you've got some soldier commander on the battlefield pay one sack one of your one ones your commander gains indestructible that could be huge that could save the game for you etchings of the chosen if you've got black and white in your colors this is definitely a card that you should look at and then finally to wrap it up we've got morophon the boundless it is a seven cost it is a five colored deck creature only but it's just so boundless that I thought it would be worth noting, and I know somebody was going to bring it up in the comments anyway. Enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Spells of the chosen type you cast cost a white, a blue, a black, a red, and a green less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. Other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. So if you're playing a five color, you know, slivers deck, Morophon could be at the helm of it. Morophon could be in your 99. It's a crazy fun card. It's a shapeshifter for modern horizons you know it you love it figured it would be a great place to end this video really appreciate everybody watching let me know if there are some tribal cards that could fit in more than just one subtype sub theme of tribal deck that maybe should be included with this list and if you haven't seen any of our three ways to build series or other edh deck building series go check those out links are down in the description below to those playlists i think that this will serve as a great primer for tribal decks and then you can get into the specifics of whatever tribe you're trying to build hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that that notification bell down there so you know when we go live on youtube if you want to hang out with us we do also stream on twitch you can find us over there at jake and joel magic and we've got a patreon if you want to support us further we do monthly giveaways early access to videos behind the scenes videos input into what videos we're going to do any given week go over there link is down in the description below check it out and see if you're a good fit other than that i appreciate it catch you later